Okay, a video on empirical formulas. Empirical formulas. Wait, come on. I hate this line. Does anybody know how to get rid of that line? I would love to know because it's really irritating. See? See how irritating that is? Okay. Okay, an empirical formula is uh, a formula for a compound in the most basic small number whole ratio. And it's not really as important what it is now because it's hard to explain it unless you understand what a molecular formula is. Molecular formula is an actual formula of the compound. So for example, uh, hydrogen peroxide, since we've already done naming and formulas and all that, this is hydrogen peroxide. And how you know it's peroxide is because uh, hydrogen is plus one. There are two of them, which means it's plus two, which means this has to be minus two. And each of the oxygens in this formula is minus one, which is a different oxidation state from oxygen as an ion. So you know that this is peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. Anyway, let's take all that away. So this is hydrogen peroxide. This is not the smallest whole number ratio that this formula could be in. It could be HO, 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 ho. So this is an example of what an empirical formula is. For right now, what I'm gonna teach you today, which I don't think is in the new book for some reason, but it is on the SAT. So I'll see if I can scrounge up the old version of the book, which does have it. Otherwise you can just listen to me and learn how to do it. So it's pretty straightforward. You use the, um, the last topic that I talked about, which was percent composition in order to, um, oh, of course you can't have a black eraser. Duh. Uh, you use percent composition in order to determine, and there's a very specific procedure that you go through to calculate this. So I have a question up here, and this is a very typical empirical formula kind of uh, calculation question, which says an oxide of chromium is found to have the following percent composition, 68.4% chromium, 31.6% oxygen, determine this compound's empirical formula. Okay, step one is you change, you literally change the percent sign to grams. So I'm gonna start with 68.4 grams of chromium and 31.6 grams of oxygen. That's like, you're just changing the symbol next to it. The next thing you're gonna do, which is something that I think that I mentioned before, even though this year has been so screwed up with COVID and all that, I, I don't have the opportunity to stress it so much in class, which is when you see grams, change grams into moles. It's something that my 10th grade chemistry teacher taught me. Literally, when you see grams, use grams per mole and I'll never forget it. I still have that burned in my memory. So I'm trying to do that for you as well. When you see grams, change them to moles. Why? Because you cannot compare masses of different compounds, but you can compare moles of different compounds because a mole is a standard amount, right? 6.022 times 10 to the power 23, just like one dozen is always 12. So if you have a dozen crayons and a dozen hairpins, you, there's still, you're still talking about 12, so they, you can compare the two amounts. You cannot say I've got five grams of crayons and five grams of hairpins because those are going to be obviously very different amounts. Probably even just one crayon is five grams and you'll probably have, I don't know, how many hairpins do you think are in five grams? I would say maybe 10, 10 hairpins, maybe five hairpins. They might be about a gram a piece. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing you're going to do after changing the symbol is you're going to multiply times molar mass uh, to get the number of moles. So if I go to, let me put my thingies in there. So I need grams of chromium, that's one mole. Grams of oxygen, I know oxygen 16. I do not have chromium uh, off the top of my head. So let's open a periodic table. Let's go back here see if I can. I used to open these like that. And, well, that's not very useful, is it? Okay, having issues, go away. Okay, I guess we'll just do it the old fashioned way. Just open it. Okay, chromium. I forgot what chromium is. There we go. Chromium is, let's just call it 52. So I'll go back here and I've got 52. 
Okay. Now I'm gonna cut my grams like that. Let's go back to Okay, now let me get my calculator out. All right, so I want 68.4 divided by 52, and that's 1.32. You always want to do um, two decimals. Oh my God, okay. All right, and then I've got 31.6 divided by 16, and I get 1.98. That's interesting. I can already see it's gonna go away, okay. So this is the number of moles. Now the next step is you're going to divide both numbers by the smallest of these numbers. So of 1.32, 1.98, 1.32 is smaller. So I'm gonna divide by 1.32, so that's one. What does that equal? I gotta get my calculator back. Come here, come here. Okay, this should be interesting because I don't think it's an even number. Ah, okay, perfect. I get 1.5. Now, under normal circumstances, these would represent the subscripts in the formula. So the formula, remember, it always starts with the metal first. So it's CR. And then the subscript for CR is one, so I leave that blank. And then O, which is 1.5, but you cannot have decimals as a subscript. So if this happens, then basically what that means is you have to multiply the whole thing times two. So you get CR2, O, three. Ta -da! That is the empirical formula. Okay, here is another example. The percent composition of a compound was found to be 63.5% silver, 8.2% nitrogen, and 28.3% oxygen. Determine the compound's empirical formula. Again, you're gonna start, ugh. We'll start with uh, changing the percent to grams. So silver is AG, and we're gonna change it to moles. And I don't like that period table, but oh well. Okay, AG is 107.87 grams. And I'm just going to set it up for, oh, cut that. I'm going to set it up for the other one, the other two, sorry. Uh, nitrogen, mole, and I think, I'll double check, I think it's 14. No, 14, right? Yeah, 14. 14 grams. Oops. And 28.3 grams of O. Uh, one more. It's important to, to distinguish between nitrogen and being only one mole, not N2. And oxygen is just O, not O2, because you're not talking about oxygen gas, you're talking about elemental oxygen. All right, now let's get the calculator back. Hello, come on, come on. Oh my God, this is so infuriating. It's going to do it, yeah. Hopefully you can still see, yeah, I can still see. All right, so we have 63.5 divided by 107.87 and we get zero. Oh my God, what just happened? Can I? Seriously? Okay. Holy crap. 0 0.59 and 8.2. Oh, God. I hate teaching from home. 8.2 divided by 14. 0 0.59 and then finally 28. 0.3 divided by 16, 1.77. Okay, can you go away now? Go away, go away. All right. 
And then finally, you divide by the smallest number, which is 0 0.59, 0 0.59. So obviously, this is one, and this is one. And damn, if I didn't have to get the calculator out again. OK, I'm just going to leave that there. All right, 1.77 divided by 0.59. And you get three. Yeah, see, now you get a nice, a nice whole number. Three. So again, these final numbers here represent the subscripts. So it's eight. Oh, Jesus. Take the wheel. AG is one, N is one, and O is three. And guess what? You should recognize that as silver nitrate. Ta da!